Hello, I'm Ed. And I'm Martha. And we're back! We had such a good time baking the first time that we thought we'd do it all again with you. And this time we're baking for Easter. Martha, tell me, what are we baking today? So last time we baked Christmas gingerbreads together, but today we are baking, let's have a look, da, 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 Easter egg brownies. Oh my goodness, it looks amazing! Right now, I just want to put my face into the middle and start eating all of it. Can I, Martha? That's not a good idea, Ed. At home, you are going to be making this. So when you've made it, you can do that. Particularly as Martha isn't there to stop you. That is true, you can do whatever you like, but I feel like your parents might want to stop you from having all that sugar before a meal. Top tip, that's why you're the pro. I can't wait to get started. What do we do? So the first thing we need to do is make sure you have washed your hands. We've already washed ours, so go and do the same. The second thing we need to do is preheat our oven. Now, we're looking for a temperature of 200 degrees, which is 180 degrees in a fan oven, or gas mark six. Done, done, what's next? So, next we need to line our tin. So, I've got a tin in my drawer, a lovely rectangular tin. You can actually use any shape you like, but make sure it's a similar size to this. Okay. Then we need to line it with some baking parchment. So get some baking parchment and some scissors. This step is really important, otherwise your brownies are going to get stuck in the tin. Right, I'm watching carefully. So you want to cut a piece which is roughly the same size. Right. Oh, hang on. OK, I'm... OK. Goodness. Um, right. <laughs> right. And then press it in to your tin. Right. OK. Now, Martha, tell me what you remember about Easter growing up. Oh, I loved Easter growing up, firstly because there was always loads of chocolate. My favourite thing about the day, though, was that my mum would always make an amazing roast dinner, a big leg of roast lamb, and then we'd have roast potatoes, and we'd have loads of people around the table, everyone coming to join in the feast, and it was always so much fun. And if we were lucky, we'd get an Easter egg hunt afterwards as well. Now tell me, Martha, what do you bake at Easter? Oh, there's so many great things to bake at Easter. One of my favourite traditional bakes is called a simnel cake, and it's a really weird cake. It's like a layer of fruit cake, a layer of marzipan, another layer of fruit cake, another layer of marzipan, 11 little marzipan balls, and then you put the whole cake under the grill. Weird. <laughs> and what if you don't like marzipan? If you don't like marzipan, it's got to be a hot cross bun. I love hot cross buns. The smell of them toasting. I don't like hot cross buns that taste of rocks. No. What do you do to make them soft and fluffy? The secret to a fluffy hot cross bun is time. When you're making the dough and leaving it to rise, leave it for a really long time so that all of those lovely air bubbles can develop in the dough. So the secret is the time before the oven. You it learnt indeed. it here first, <laughs> right? So we've lined our tin. Yours looks great. I've done a good job a now. really good job. So next, we need to start our brownie batter. So we need our sugars and our butter. Let's get those out. Wonderful. And then we need a saucepan to mix everything together in. Fantastic. So this is going to be heated on the hob. So we need to put both of our sugars, we've got brown and white, into the saucepan. Let's pour that in. See if we can get it all in, <laughs> into the pan. And then our butter. And you want this chopped into chunks. Chopped so into ours chunks. Has already been Look broken at into that. chunks. Everything is just perfect. Put those chunks in. Lovely. Great. So we've got all our ingredients together in the saucepan. Now we're going to take this over to the hob and melt it for about five minutes until it's lovely and smooth. You need to stir all the time, so I can stir yours for you, for you Thanks, if you Martha. like. Now, I want you to get out your mini eggs because we are going to use Cadbury's mini eggs to tell the story of Easter. Now, this is crazy, but Cadbury's mini eggs only come in four colours. 
white, purple, pink, and yellow. Who knew? We're going to use these four colours to tell the amazing true story of the first Easter. If you've never heard this story before, it is going to completely blow your mind. And if you think you know every detail, let me promise you this is the most delicious version you will ever hear. Let's do this! Whoop, whoop. Martha, how is that looking? It's looking great, lovely and smooth. You can see it looks almost like caramel. So what I'm going to do is turn the heat off and leave it to cool for about five minutes. Now, Martha, can you take a white one? Absolutely. But don't eat it. How does anyone hold chocolate and not eat it? Now, we're doing the white one, which is the Last Supper. This is the last meal Jesus had with his friends. We're doing the white one because at that meal, they ate bread. Oh, I love white bread. My mum would try to make me eat brown bread, but I think they make it using cardboard. <laughs> Martha, what's your favourite type of bread? Oh, that's a hard question, but I think focaccia bread. Focaccia coming at you, Martha. <laughs> can I eat this? Yes, you can. Thank you. Now, Martha, I'll need to take the other half of the bread. Don't pull till I say. Just before Jesus ate the meal with his friends, he said to them, this bread is like my body, which is broken for you. Go, Martha Paul. Ah! <laughs> his friends were sat there thinking, who is going to break Jesus's body? He's the most powerful human who has ever walked this earth. He's the boss. He's God's son. <laughs> Do you know, Jesus knew exactly what was about to happen to him. He was still in charge. That night, as he went out with his friends, the soldiers came for him with swords. What a cliffhanger! What is going on? Martha, what is going on? So, with our brownies, the next part is to break up our chocolate. So, we've got our dark chocolate, and we're going to break it up. Hmm. Now, at home, you can chop yours up, but we are going to bash ours up to help us hear the story. That's because... Jesus got bashed. The soldiers beat Jesus up. This is the story of the purple egg. It's purple because the soldiers made Jesus wear a purple robe. Now, in those days, only the one king was allowed to wear purple. It's a joke because Jesus had said, I am God's forever king. The soldiers were saying, <laughs> what sort of God's king can you be if we can beat you up? This is a hard part of the Easter story to hear. It is. It's such a sad story, but on the other side is a happier one. So I think we should keep going. <laughs> they got Jesus and they put him in front of the people and the most powerful judge in the land. This is me pretending to be a judge. The crowd shouted, we want him punished! The judge, even though Jesus had never done anything wrong, said Jesus is guilty. Jesus was taken off to be punished with death. This is the story of the purple egg. It sounds odd that we're celebrating this with chocolate brownies, but stay with the story. Shall I tell you what's happening next? Please do. So we need to get our warm butter and sugar mixture from the hob. This should be cooled for about five to 10 minutes so it's not piping hot. And we are going to tip this into a mixing bowl. I'll get yours for you, Ed. Thank you. There you go. Now, so I put this in there. Yep. So we want to scraping it out. Scrape that into the mixing bowl and this will help it to cool down a little bit more as well. Get as much as you can. We don't want any food waste. I'm all clear. Wonderful. Right. Just get the last bit out of mine. Thank you very much. And then we are going to add our chocolate into the bowl. Now, this is still warm, so the chocolate should melt in the residual heat. <laughs> Let's pour that in. Now, tell me, Martha, while I'm stirring, 
Tell me what your family did over Easter weekend. Oh, I love Easter weekend. I've already said that there was great food. But one other thing we used to do is that we used to go to church and we used to actually go twice in that week. We used to go once on Good Friday and once again on Easter Sunday. And on Easter Sunday, it was always like a big party, a big celebratory service with lots of loud music and lots of fun celebrating the end of the story when we get to that in a little bit. Um, but one thing we used to always do was that sometimes after church, we would give out hot cross buns to people in the street just as a little gift. As they were walking past? Yes. How old were you, a child? Oh, uh, yes, I was probably under 11 and I found it a little bit embarrassing, to be honest. But <laughs> people always took them and they were so grateful and everyone loves a bit of free food. Absolutely. I'd take a hot cross bun from anyone who offered it to me. <laughs> and Martha, as a child, we're looking at the death of Jesus. Do you remember what you thought of that? I remember thinking about the story a lot as a child and even more as I grew up. But the one thing about the story is that it's a true story. And sometimes when sad things happen, you can't just cut them out of the story when it's real. So yeah. it's so important that we learn it. But one thing I was always taught was that Jesus doesn't stay beaten up on the cross forever. No, there's a happy bit coming at the end of the story. Shh, I don't won't tell spoil them it. how it ends. <laughs> I won't spoil it, but something to look forward to. And chocolate. Mine is honestly melted. What's your favourite kind of chocolate, Martha? Oh, I love all kinds of chocolate, but dark chocolate is my favourite. Not so dark that it makes your mouth hurt, but just oh. dark enough that you can eat it for forever and ever. Sometimes I like to cut out the middle step and just eat the chocolate and not bother baking with it. <laughs> I know, I do that too. Right, so that's lovely and melted. Yours is looking good. I can't good. believe it's melted nice. and we're not even near the cooker. I know, it's a clever little tip. So the next thing that's going in here is yes. our eggs. So, okay. set that to one side. We want three eggs. <laughs> And now the best way to do this in a foolproof way is to crack the eggs one at a time into a smaller bowl because that means any shell or anything that goes wrong, you can just start again. Martha, can I just explain to everyone watching, because you told me last time, <laughs> that you do this with four taps and a split. Let's do it. One, two, three, four and a split. Yes! Oh, I'm perfect. such the champion of eggs. I'm just going to... Oh, no, I mix first. So let's beat this one, just because if we crack another one in and get some shell, we, we don't want to start again. I see that. So even while I'm the expert egg cracker, I want to be careful. And then we're going to add this here. What you want to make sure is that this isn't too hot. You should be able to touch the side of the bowl and it feel just a little bit warm. But if it feels too hot, leave it for a couple of minutes. OK. But we should be OK with ours. So we're yes. going to pour our egg in. If okay. it's too hot, you'll end up with scrambled egg in your brownies and nobody wants that. So beat that in. And then we're just going to repeat it with the other two eggs. This is going so well. OK, now, can I tell you some fun facts about eggs? Please do. I'm all about the fun facts. Do you know that the largest egg in the world is the ostrich egg? Whoa! It would take an hour to cook an ostrich egg to make it a dippy egg, this is, an, I know this is a balloon, <laughs> but this is how big an ostrich egg is. You'd need a very big saucepan to cook that. You would. Let me make, oh, hang on, I'm just going to catch up. <laughs> now, do you know, Martha, that the smallest egg in the world is the hummingbird egg, Ooh. which is exactly the same size as a mini egg? Wow. Can you even begin to imagine how small a hummingbird chick must be to come out of there? So cute. OK, you're on your third. Last I'm just going to crack my egg perfectly. Don't worry, Ed, there's no rush. One, two, three, four. In it goes every single time because I have learnt from Martha how to crack an egg. So crack each egg, pour it in. Doing a great job. Mix it up. I'll take that. And as you add your eggs, you'll notice it goes from being a little bit grainy to being like a lovely, luscious, smooth batter. Oh, Martha. Now, when can I stick my finger in it? <laughs> I mean, I think you should try it all the way along. Helps you understand baking more when you know what it tastes like at each stage. OK, let me see. What are we calling this? We're calling this a fudgy mix, are we? It is a fudgy mix. So in a minute, we're going to add our dry ingredients. Mine is looking about ready. OK, see? I'm nice sticking my sweet. finger in! <laughs> <laughs> it's fudgy! Uh, <laughs> no. 
That looks great. Great. They're I'm both mixed. Look. I'm look. I've honestly done that, Martha. Just compare they look yours. Exactly the I, same. I think mine is as good as a Martha mix. Delicious. So, okay. Right. The next thing we need to add. The last thing is our dry ingredients. So, okay. you need your flour and your cocoa powder. That's going to make them extra chocolatey. Okay. And we're going to tip this in. You can use a sieve if you're being a bit pedantic, but do you know what? You can just tip it in. I don't even know what pedantic means. <laughs> if you're being a little bit over careful. Okay, I'm, I'm not over careful. I'll take your bag for you. Oh, thank you. Great, so and then we mix that up. You want to mix it, and what you want to be careful not to do is to over mix it. You don't want to go crazy because that might make the brownies a little bit too cakey. Hang on, you used cakey just then as if it's a bad <laughs> thing. How can being cakey ever be bad? <laughs> Well, with a brownie, some people love their brownies a little bit cakey, but I like mine to be super fudgy and really delicious. Are you a cakey brownie person or a fudgy brownie person? Personally, I am totally with Martha. I'm for the fudgy brownie, yeah. which means sort of gooey in the middle. Gooey in the middle, and it doesn't have much air in it. Like a big Victoria sponge would be lovely and light. No, we don't want that in our brownies. That's why we don't mix them too much. OK. So mix them until all those dry ingredients are just about combined. We don't want any patches. Now, I could keep going with my fun facts for the rest of the day because, as you know, Martha, from listening to the Faith in Kids podcast... Yep. ..we're all about the fun facts as well as getting a lot of Jesus action in. Oh, love that. How's yours looking, Ed? I have to say, I'm going to say perfect. It looks pretty perfect. I hope yours is looking good at home. OK, am I allowed to do the finger test again, Martha? Yeah, have because a go. I like to know every stage of baking. Yep, have a taste. <laughs> <laughs> That's a happy face. <laughs> <laughs> that is great, Martha. Oh, brilliant. So, right. the next thing we need to do is tip this mixture yes. into our tin. Yes. So you might want to get someone to help with this because it's a bit of a two-handed job. Right. I'm sure we'll manage it. We'll manage it. Okay, right. okay, okay. If you want extra help. I'm sure I can do this big hands. If you've got small hands, yes, you that's might when you need. need an adult to hold it. So let's get that all into the tin. Wow, that is looking delicious. Martha, I don't think I've totally messed this up. I think you've done a great job, Ed. A cracking job. Oh, look at us. And Martha, just out of interest, I've got this friend who sometimes likes to lick the bowl. <laughs> you could lick this bowl, couldn't you? My friend could lick this bowl. I think your friend could lick this bowl. It would be, it would be a shame to waste it, wouldn't it? It would, it would. And when we've got it all in... When you've got it all in, you want to use your spoon or your spatula just yep. to spread it out right to the edges. OK. OK. Oh! Looks so... It smells so chocolatey. Um, actually, sometimes, Martha, do you not even get it in the oven? You just eat all the mix before <laughs> you can get it there. Yeah, this is a good, definitely a good mix. Try to remember, you've got to get some in the oven. So maybe one finger dip is enough? Sometimes two. <laughs> and we're going to be decorating ours with mini eggs, but you could use anything, really. You can use fresh fruit like raspberries. You can use any kind of Easter chocolate that you've got around the house. But if you use mini eggs, Martha, you get to remember the Easter story. Yes, and you will never forget it after you watching this. So can I put them in now? Yeah. OK. So once it's nice and smooth, look at that looking lovely. Okay. We are going to sprinkle over right. some mini eggs. Make sure you use all the different colours. So you have got a little bag. You just pour the bag in then. Yeah. You just One bag for each tray. Do you remember where we have come from? The white egg was the story of the Last Supper. Jesus's last meal, when he knew exactly what was going to happen as he ate bread. And do you remember the purple egg? The purple egg was because the soldiers put a purple robe on Jesus when they beat him up. Even though he had done nothing wrong, he was sent to be punished with death. OK, I've got to catch up now. Oh, no, no rush, no And I rush. can put all the pink ones and yellow ones in. You put on whatever pop, you like. Look, you've not got very many, Martha. <laughs> I'm going to try and decorate mine to make them look oh, a little bit Easter-y. Oh, OK, OK, I see what's happening but here. you do whatever you okay, want. OK, I'm going to decorate mine a bit more differently. <laughs> OK, great, 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 great. Now what do we do? So, the last step is that these are going to go into the oven. Your oven should have been preheating, so it's going to go in for 20 to 25 minutes. Let's pop them in. Perfect. 
We are absolutely doing this. Martha, thank you so much. Oh my goodness, that purple egg was hard work. Now we are into the pink egg. Oh, Martha, could you just go and get my twine for me quickly? Of While she's gone, it's the pink egg because of blood. But I'm not going to use real blood. I'm going to squirt some ketchup on a tea towel and we'll see what Martha thinks. Okay. Oh, Martha! Look Ed, what's happened! What have you done? It's not actually blood, Martha, it's ketchup. You see, ketchup is what you're using if you you're messing me. around. <laughs> but in this story, it really was blood. Now, you see, do you remember what happened just before the meal? Jesus said his body would be broken. He said his blood would be spilt. He knew he was going to die on a cross. And that's why the cross is the symbol of Christianity. This is a cross, except Jesus didn't die on one with spoons. It is a sad part of the story. Jesus did die, but it's called Good Friday because Jesus was secretly winning. He was so powerful. He could have done anything. He could have left the cross, but he chose to stay because he was winning for us life forever with him. So, as Jesus took his last breath, he died. They took him down from the cross and they laid his body in a tomb and placed a huge stone over the door. This is the lowest point of the story. Two bits of good news. Jesus was in the tomb. First good news, it's not the end of the story. Second piece of good news, we're making brownies! We are indeed, and do you know what? Tell me. They're ready, and I've got them out of the oven already. Oh. They smell amazing, let's bring them over. Look at my brownies! <gasps> I've left these to cool for about 10 to 15 minutes, so they're cool enough to touch, and look how great they look! And mine are not a disaster. They look fantastic, Ed. You have really learned over these last three months. Everything I learned has come from you, Martha. <laughs> they look amazing. Now, shall I tell you how we're gonna decorate them? Yes. So, you could eat your brownies just like this when they're cold, but I'm gonna be decorating them with my favorite ingredient, Let's have a look, see what it is. More chocolate! More chocolate! So I have got some white chocolate. Now, what we want to do with this is melt it. So there are two ways you can do this. First is in a microwave. My favourite tip with this is get yourself a disposable piping bag, break up the chocolate, put it inside, and then microwave it in the bag. Can you even just cut the corner off a freezer bag? You can, yep. Yeah. And then when you get it out, cut the end off and you can drizzle straight away, no mess. Parents, you'll love that one. The second way you can do it if you haven't got a microwave, get yourself a bowl over a pan of boiling water, make a bain-marie and melt it on the hob. How casual, make a bain-marie. <laughs> you know how to do that now, I Ed. really do. <laughs> oh. Now, let me tell you some fun facts about chocolate. Martha, chocolate comes from the cacao bean, which goes on a cacao tree. It's a bean growing on a tree. That's a vegetable. Does it count as one of your five a day? I'm going to say it does, Martha. Now, the Aztecs <laughs> loved chocolate so much, they prized it so highly that they used chocolate oh, as wow. money. How do you fancy being paid in chocolate, Martha? I'd love that. Does it mean if you were paid in chocolate, you could buy chocolate with chocolate? Yeah. It gets quite confusing quite that. quickly. You could eat it all. Martha. Let's do the moment the women went to the tomb. All right, then. OK, so first <laughs> of all, we have to look like women. Uh, okay. So there is... That's going to go on your head. All right. I've got one to go on my head. <gasps> this is a great look. Right, I'm going to strap mine on because that, I think, is probably <laughs> what they did. Hang very on, accurate. Hang on. Oh, dear. You okay. look the part. OK, that is the goal. That is the goal. OK, now, they took spices to Jesus' body. I've got some spices. Uh, last time I tried cinnamon. What happens if I try star anise? Ooh, I mean, it's got a very strong flavour and I think it might make your tongue go a little bit numb. Mm, I don't want to hear the stop and speak for the rest <laughs> of the time, OK? No, we need to hear what you have to say, Ed. OK, let's try cloves. All right, then. I think you should try a clove. OK, see right. See what you think of that. Let's see. Clove. Hmm. This one's not the same as cinnamon. Wow! <laughs> 
Oh, that's really kicked in now. <laughs> that That's like being punched in the face with a Christmas pie. <laughs> oh, mince pies in your head. Filling your head. Imagine a mince pie that's actually ear to ear. Oh, now it's in the, right at the back of your throat. You don't need to try that at home. I've no. just done that for you. I'm not going to try that either. Now, <laughs> this is the yellow egg. It's a yellow egg because it is the moment on that first Sunday when the sun was rising. At the beginning of Easter Sunday, the women went to the tomb with their spices to put on Jesus's body. Let's go, Martha. All right, then. To the tomb. They found the tomb empty. Jesus's body had gone. <gasps> That was exhilarating. Now, it's not that someone had taken Jesus' body. It's that he had risen from the dead and he is now alive. From that day, everything changed. Jesus had beaten death. He had opened a doorway to life forever with him. That is why we now give each other eggs to celebrate Easter because an egg as we all know is a sign of new life we know what comes in an egg <laughs> new life that first Easter when they went to the tomb you know now what they found they found it empty because Jesus was alive. Jesus had new life. New life that he gives to those who are trusting him. A life just like his after death. Martha, can we decorate the brownies now? Of course we can. So I've got my white chocolate melted in my pipe and bag. Ed, you've got yours in a bowl, haven't you? Absolutely ready. Fantastic. So we are ready to decorate. Now, you can do any design you like. I'm going to go for something a bit floral and Eastery, I think. What are you going to do, Ed? Something a little like that. So I'm going to try and do some nice flowers on mine. OK. I am mostly drizzling. A drizzle is always good. You can okay. make any bake look good if you do a drizzle of chocolate okay, on okay. the top. I'm good at that. I'm good at that. I'm not going to look at yours so much, Martha, so that way I'll continue to be absolutely delighted with what I'm doing. OK. Now, Martha, can you tell me, while you're concentrating, tell me what this Easter story means for you? I'll do my best. Oh, this Easter story means so much to me. It completely changes my whole life because a big part of my life is that I call myself a Christian and if I didn't believe this, this story was true, I wouldn't call myself a Christian at all because this story to me is just so important. Why is it that this story matters more than all the other ones? This story just shows that Jesus was the Son of God and if he didn't rise from the dead, if none of those things that you said in the story happened, he would just be a regular man like you or like me. And this changes everything because it shows how set apart he was, how different he was. Thanks, Martha. And is there a time when you think this story, the first Easter, has made a difference to the way you feel about sad things? Yeah, definitely. I think it changes the way I feel about sad things. And I think this year in particular, I'm sure many of us can think of sad things that have happened to us, whether that be that we've not seen our friends as much, we've not been at school, or even sadder things like people who were close to us passing away or people getting ill. Um, and for me, this year has been a sad year because my grandpa passed away. Um, and it was one of the first people that I've lost who's been close to me. Um, but as you can see, I'm not super sad about this because my grandpa had the new life that you spoke about because he had a relationship with Jesus and he trusted in him. And it just makes me happy to know he has that new life and that one day I'll get to have that new life with him as well. Martha, thanks for speaking to us about things that are sad. Jesus' new life does change the way we think about death and sad things. We have had such a great time together. Thank you for joining us. 
We have learned so much. We have learned how to make chocolate brownies the very best way. We have also learned how to tell the Easter story with just four eggs. We have learned that the white egg is because Jesus ate bread with his friends that night before his body was broken. The purple egg, because the soldiers put him in a purple robe and sent him to be punished when he had done nothing wrong. The pink egg, because blood was spilt. When he could have chosen to leave, he stayed to save us. The yellow egg, because on that first Easter Sunday, as the sun came up, the women found the tomb empty and Jesus was risen. Ed, Martha. do you know what? What? The brownies are ready. The brownies are ready. We've Mine... been decorating and they are looking incredible. Let's Mine have a look. does. Oh. Goodness me. Martha, how did you do that? That is incredible. Oh, thanks, Ed. Do you know what? I think that yours is incredible. Those squiggles, not everyone could do those. No, no, no. they're special, <laughs> aren't they? Brownies are ready. That must be three of the finest words in the English language, perhaps mm. only after Jesus is risen. Oh, Ed, I've got another three favourites. Tell me. Do you want to hear them? Yes. I'll wash up. I'll wash up. Oh, thanks, Ed. Oh. It will be my pleasure. <laughs> Please, can you send us photos of your bake? We would love to see what you have done today. And please, tell each other the Easter story this Easter. Celebrate Easter, Jesus' death and resurrection. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.